two rules while I'm gone. Don't touch my radio. No fighting! Looks like we're gonna be starting off 2022 with the bang. Now, even though I did hear about a Cuphead show coming out before, now we actually have a trailer, and whether it's my desire for good and popular shows about video games, or Cuphead's reputation for having such a beautiful art style and music choice, I'm ready for the Cuphead show. <laughs> Now, if you're one of the few that doesn't know, Cuphead is a run and gun video game that was inspired by rubber hose animation, an animation style that was popular within the early days of traditional animation. And while the general synopsis for Cuphead is basically revolving around Cuphead and Mugman, shown on screen, fighting through levels to repay back their debt to the devil, the game is known for being very difficult and fighting through numerous boss levels and meeting a cast of wacky characters that are still referred to by name to this day. Reaching over 6 million sales by 2020, it's widely known for being a great example of an indie game with a strong sense of style and a loyal fan base, which makes it perfect for the wild world of animation. Say, Cuphead, why are we fighting again? Uh, cause we're not supposed to? Right! Netflix has ordered reportedly 12 12 minute episodes, describing it as, quote, a character driven comedy series following the receptacle headed Cuphead and his brother Mugman on a carnival themed adventure through the Inkwell Isles. The journey will bring them face to face with the devil himself. The show will be coming out worldwide on February 18th, and personally, I can't wait. Not only that, but in promotion for the show, there's even a website shown on screen where you can support the show through various different outlets, collecting a character card as a reward for doing these activities and even hunt for a hidden code that I'm personally not gonna spoil because that would be quite rude. There seems to be more chapters to it that will be released as time goes on, so I enjoyed that they've thought a lot of this out and are taking advantage of the different avenues to generate interest, as I've seen plenty of shows come in hot and not be talked about after a month. I also enjoyed that the creators, Chad and Jared Moldenhauer, are serving as executive producers as well as other seasoned vets, showing that there's not only a lot of freedom involved in this, but experience making all of this work out so well so far. The series is animated by Lighthouse Studios. It's a new studios I haven't heard too much about and apparently going to their website and looking through the work that they have done, they have worked on El Defo on Apple Music, Little Ellen on HBO Max, which by the way, I may get to at some point, and obviously the Cuphead show. So this is a very interesting line of work and I can't wait to see what they do with this. The music is also being composed by Eagle Plum. And if that name rings a bell, he's a songwriter for the theme song of Star vs. the Forces of Evil. However, he has composed and or done music work for Harvey Beaks, Welcome to the Wayne, The Patrick Star Show, Cam Coral, and SpongeBob SquarePants. And speaking of animation styles, I feel like I probably shouldn't gloss over this point. The rubber hose animation style does not come without baggage, with some people making the claim that the portrayal of the style cannot be separated from its racist undertones. In fact, one claim from Unwinnable states, quote, the imagery that Studio MDHR took from the Fleischer style effectively carried the racial stereotypes of 1930s Harlem and minstrel shows that the animation style was built on. I bring it up not only because I wonder if people are going to have a conversation about that now, again, given that this show is making its rounds on social media, but also because it's kind of an uncommon issue within animation to wonder about if an animation style tied to a time where that said style was used for malicious acts should be praised and or used now. Now, call me crazy or relatable, but I haven't met Chad and Jared personally, but I believe it when they say that they wanted to use the style and keep the history in the past, it clearly shows that within the game. And don't take it from me, take it from my younger sibling, because I'll never forget the day when we played Cuphead. And not because it was this warm, wholesome experience, but because it was the first and only time I was incredibly outclassed, outplayed, taught how to play, then outplayed, and then completely out of my league for a video game right next to someone who would have been about eight at the time. Playing it like it was Pong. And if he can enjoy the game among the millions that have, then why do I need to stress about the negative historical aspect to the style when there's so much upside and also positive influence that came from this game? Personally, I'm looking forward to see how much of the lore 
from the game is involved within the show, especially considering that the creators are working on it. I'm also looking forward to the music because when you look at the trailer, there's a strong musical aspect to it. And I also want to see how they approach it because I can clearly see the Cuphead show going super episodic with all of the 12 episodes following just different paths. However, you can also make it super story based where you have to watch the first episode to understand what happens in the 12th episode, even if you do play the game. Similar to another Netflix show, Arcane, where even if you know about League of Legends, you still need to watch the first episode to understand the ninth episode. Once again, it's coming out in February 18th, and I'm definitely going to be covering it when it comes out. But until then, check out these videos right here and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Until then, take care. Alpha out.